said to have a huge heart. Tail of the tape for this, our middleweight fight, and perhaps it could be an advancement to a middleweight championship fight. Ken Shamrock and Vitor Belfort, Bo Lander and Ortiz knocking at the door. Only one year separates these two. 6'2", Tito Ortiz, three inches taller than Jerry Bo Lander. The official introductions forthcoming from Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight is a middleweight fight beginning with the fighter standing to my left. He is a submission fighter and a UFC 13 veteran. He has a mixed martial arts record of one and one. Standing six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 199 pounds. Fighting out of Huntington Beach, California, please welcome Tito And his opponent, standing to my right, he is a submission fighter with a UFC record of five and one. He is a veteran of UFC's eight, 11, 12, and 16. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 199 pounds, and he's fighting out of the lion's den in San Diego, California. Please welcome So Tito Ortiz, whose high school wrestling coach, as I said before, was Paul Herrera, a friend of Tank Abbott's, a former sparring partner with Tank Abbott, set to take on the Lion's Den again and avenge perhaps his loss to Guy Metzger. We are set to get it underway inside the octagon to Big John McCarthy. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it all. Middleweight fight number two on the card tonight. Watch for Ortiz, he wants to keep it on his feet. He's a good grappler, he can go down to the ground. But Bolander is very comfortable, particularly on his back, looking for submissions. Ortiz got caught in the guillotine. He says, I will never get caught in a guillotine again. This one does not stay on the feet very long. Half guard, Bolander now applies the full guard. Ortiz using his head to Work your way through. try to keep Bolander pinned in against the fence. Bolander trying to keep the space close, not allow punching room. But Bolander goes inverted. This is what he loves to do. He'll roll right back on the back of his head, try to try to scoop Ortiz's head with his leg and look for arm bars. How disruptive is that to an opponent? Particularly when all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, and you want to go pulling out, it suddenly makes you hesitate. When you hesitate, you're not offensive. Great athleticism and flexibility displayed by Jerry Bolander to be able to do that. Well, I'm sure Jerry would not want to be pinned up against the fence. I'm, I'm sure he would rather be facing towards the center of the octagon where he can scoot and move his hips. He really doesn't have any place to go because the one direction you can move in the guard is back, but he's got the fence in the way. He might be able to scoot to the side, but his first worry right here is defense against strikes from Ortiz. Trying to gain a little position right there with a scoot to the hips, and Ortiz jams him back up against the fencing. And you'd have to wonder, if Ortiz is in Tank Abbott's camp, they don't train from the guard very much. Well, he was a long time ago being a sparring partner. He has since had a falling out with Tank. Maybe it was over the moniker of Huntington Beach Bad Boy. That might be, but now Ortiz trains with John Lober, who we've seen here at the UFC, who lost to Frank Shamrock at Ultimate Brazil. He's really trained hard in submissions with Lober and Muay Thai fighter John Spencer. Takes time to get fluid at those, though, and Burnett is fluid. And again, what's really helping Ortiz here is the fact they're up against the fence. Tito Ortiz, born and raised in Huntington Beach, California. Jerry's strength has always been the groundwork. And he gets away from the fencing momentarily. Watch out for the neck, though. Boy, that's tight, too. That is tight, too. Basically a head chancery, as we call it in wrestling. Ortiz with the early advantage on Jerry Bolander. And he is rocking Bolander. 
He is rocking Bolander with uppercuts. Bolander is in trouble. Ortiz using great combinations and aggressiveness to overwhelm UFC veteran Jerry Bolander. And Ortiz is a huge middleweight. He is cutting 10 plus pounds to make that 200. Disadvantage here early. Trying to work it around again. Tito Ortiz wants a victory over the Lions' den. Bo Lander, including the UFC, overall mixed martial arts, eight and two. He has only lost two times. A couple of strikes, but it seems as though Ortiz has slowed down a little bit here. I wonder if that big flurry on the feet might have sapped him of a little bit of energy. He's measuring his punches here, but Bolander's got his arms up, his legs up. There's not a lot really happening there in terms of damage. On his opponent, Bolander said, a good wrestler who likes to scrap. That has been the case so far. And effectively scrapping so far. Certainly he has been the aggressor and he has dominated the action thus far. That one flurry on the feet certainly putting him ahead on the judges' card. Well, Ortiz said coming in that he felt that he was superior with striking skill. Come on, Joe, stand it up. Come on, stand They're standing it up. up. Nothing happening. This is an advantage to Jerry Bolander. Four and a half minutes of an early disadvantage. I'm not sure if this is an advantage for Bolander. And I'm only going to say that, Mike, because it seems that Mike can't do anything to him on his feet, which means he wants to bring him back down to the ground. And if Ortiz is smart, he's going to try to keep Jerry up against the fence because Bolander does not have room to move them. Don't be powerful, nice and quick. Don't lean, wait for it. Come on, suck it up. Good. Yeah, suck it up. Thank you once again, our fans all over the world, for being part of UFC 18. We welcome our viewers back from Canada. We're in Japan live tonight, in Brazil, and across the United States of America. Stay in, Jerry. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Nine and 99. What a year it is going to be. by Ortiz again. Leg kick behind, put a leg behind. There's the leg. It's amazing how disciplined these fighters are. They hear that voice of Ken Shamrock. They respond almost immediately, instinctively. Right hand hits the side of the head of Jerry Bolander. And Ortiz doing a nice job of keeping it on the feet, picking his Just like spots training, when he wants to go ahead and throw punches. But he looks as though he's slowing down a little bit. Not quite up. as active with the hands. Right hand leg kick, right hand. Leave with the right hand. Again, the punching power of Jerry Cuts are hitting Bolander. Nice combinations by Ortiz. Jerry closing the gap. Can this he do anything with it though, Jeff? He wants to do it on the ground, but certainly it's going to be tough when he's pinned up against the fence. Right now, there he goes. He's facing the center now. Now he's got room to move. Nearly a rear naked. Nice job by Ortiz. Good job of moving around, keeping from that position of armbar, now using knees to the head of Bolander. Remember, it was an armbar that finished Kevin Jackson when Bolander fought here in March. He armbarred Jackson at 10-13, now an attempted choke from his opponent. It's gone. 12 minutes with a three minute overtime once again here in this contest. If he lifts up, you throw the knee. 
You hear Ken Shamrock saying if Ortiz elevates his head to get punching room, Neil. If he lifts up, Joe, you follow that knee. But it looks as though Ortiz has studied Bolander. A couple of good elbow strikes there. the ankles. Shamrock telling Jerry to look for a choke. Now he's trying to get an arm. Ortiz was working on the ankle of Bolander, which is why Jerry really didn't uncork anything. He had to defend the ankle first. Now they're back in the guard. Relax, Gary. It's amazing for a split second, Jeff, how two competitors can be going for their own submissions at the same time. That's this wonderful game we call mixed martial arts. Great simultaneous time. submission attempts in a split second. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, get your head down. Get your head down, Jerry. Come on. Get and Shamrock down. telling Jerry to get his head down. It's tough for him to be able to do that with his neck cranked on the fence in front of us. Jerry and Ken obviously both know that. Watch the head. Let's Trying to go. spin around and get off the fencing to be able to do that. Nine minutes now in the books. You've got to regroup and get back in the Fatigue place. now is going to play a big part, Mike. You have three minutes, basically 2.45 left in regulation. If it's not over then, then they go three minutes overtime. So now it's coming down to who wants it more, who's conditioned their body more, and who is going to keep from making that big critical mistake. Ortiz has been in control. I think he has shocked many people with his performance here in the standing position. Good striking combinations. And then he's educated himself in countering Bolander's armbar attempts from the guard. Here's a wrestler that is going out and learning submission skills, jiu-jitsu, and positioning. Stand it up, let's move it, stand They're up. standing up at exactly the 10-minute mark. Stay in this fight. Ortiz doesn't need to panic, to panic, 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 panic in that top hey, position. He knows that I don't mind being on my feet. It's Bolander who's on the ground wanting to try submissions, and Ortiz has negated every one of them. Jerry really hasn't. Put Tito in a bad position yet in this fight. Ken Shamrock saying it is mental at this point. When you're tired, that is when you are susceptible to making a mistake. And Ortiz at 23 is showing tremendous composure for just his second time in the octagon. Here's someone that has learned a big lesson from his first appearance. And has gone back, trained, and look at the product now. Much improved, effective, and efficient. He's not getting tired. One minute remains here in the regulation time period. Hey, you gotta want to win the fight, man. Bo Lander, half guard. And once again, Jerry's first move here is to keep Ortiz close. And I'm sure Ortiz knows he's ahead. He doesn't have to struggle too much on top. Doesn't need to take any risks. That's the biggest thing. By taking risks, you give your opponent an opportunity. You do it. Do it. Get it up right now. You've got to try something right now. Shamrock. That's Kenny Shamrock. What a presence in the corner. Advising Bolander. We're down to 15 seconds here in regulation. He wants Bolander to try something here, but Bolander looks like he's ready to just wait it out, not absorb any damage. Those punches, though they may be striking a little bit, really aren't doing anything. They're just more of a nuisance. Right there, we're going, we're going. We've got one minute. Back to corner. No time. No time. Fighters will take a minute break before starting the over hit, overtime. An effective regulation period by Tito Ortiz. Seems composed. He's listening to his corner, listening to the advice, getting up prepared. Here, looking on early. Nice takedown. Ortiz gets into the body of Jerry Bolander, lifts him up, brings him down to the ground. Another nice takedown. Same effect. Double underhooks, and he just twists. Bolander and slams him to his back, hits him with a strike there as well. 
And then from within Bolander's guard, picking his spot, big right hand coming down, near, nailing Jerry Bolander flush. Ortiz, effective. Bolander looking for an answer. Has not been able to get his ground game on track. Ortiz doing a good job from within the guard to negate any submission hole. And I really think it's been an effective tactic to keep Bolander up against the fence so he doesn't have room to move around and transition to submission holes. him in this hunt for a middleweight championship opportunity. And Ortiz again getting an opportunity to strike. Throws a good right hand at Bolander again. Doesn't have quite the horsepower he did early in being able to take Bolander down. Oh, a left hand, a right hand by Ortiz. Bolander now you can sense the urgency in his motion. This is where Ortiz now can go ahead and relax and let the fight come to him. He's ahead. He's in a good position. He knows what Bolander wants to do for submission. He'll pick his spots and strike. Remember Petey Williams and the adjustment he made in Mobile, Alabama for the overtime period against Mark Coleman. Just a thought. The discipline of a Lions Den fighter. The Williams came out and struck and Bolander did that, but he never got away from Tito Ortiz's double underhook spare hug. And he finds himself back down on the ground. And Ortiz is just going to kill time here. He's going to kill some time. He feels he's ahead. He can control the action, keep from getting hit from Bolander. And every now and then, try to deliver a shot. Halfway now through the overtime period. Ken Shamrock saying, I want you to listen to my voice. Watch for a left hand. Out of there. Jerry's got to make a move here. He's got his hand tied up, trying to sink a punch or two by. Bolander, good counter. He's also got that left cut above the left eye. You're going to have to make up your mind. Now is the time for Jerry Bolander. Perhaps the winner of this fight could meet Vitor Belfort. But the door is wide open, as always, for our honorable, respectable, wonderful middleweight champion, Frank Shamrock, to defend his title. Shamrock, a great champion. It doesn't hurt the Stunning in his latest victories. Just a tremendous athlete. He's moved himself so far in the mixed martial arts world. And Bolander's Cup is going to get looked at. 29 seconds unofficially remaining here in the overtime period. As the doctor, Richard Istrico, and our veteran cup man, Leon Tabs, comes into the ring. And Ortiz has a huge smile on his face. He senses it. He senses it. He's sensing it. Show it for The appearance is though that cut is bad. Well, I heard one of the doctors, or Leon, say it's too close to the eye. We have never had a serious injury in the history of the UFC. How much time left, Doctor? How much time left? How much time we got? 29 seconds remain. You hear everyone trying to wonder how much time is left as they attend to Jerry Bowland. Ortiz has landed some good punches thus far, but it appears to have been a forearm right there. Quick, short, powerful forearm that opened up that cut. Another good view of it right there, and that's when the blood started. It appears as though the cut is bad, and they're going to end the fight, Mike. It is over. Tito Ortiz, and he fires the shotgun towards the Lion's Den corner. Ortiz victorious. I don't know if you would deem it an upset or not, but based on experience, I suppose you could use that word. This word, I'm going to use the word. There you go. Upset in the, the upset of Jerry Bolander. Very game, Tito Ortiz. Good class sportsmanship here at the end. For the official decision, here's Bruce Buffer. We have a winner at two minutes, 31 seconds of the overtime. The doctor had to stop the fight due to a cut to Jerry Bolander. For the winner, Tito.